Information Technology from University of Wales, Wales in UK. He continues to teach and research in the departments of physics at University Malaya, where now he focuses on nanophotonics in his research center. Proud to say that he was the first person within Malaysia to have achieved training in the fields of photonics. His extensive research area in fiber optics, op optical amplifiers, and also the lasers have brought immense contribution to the development and applications of photonic technology in Malaysia. His achievements have been recognized by many different awards, including the Merdeka Award and ASEAN Outstanding Scientist and Technology Award in 2014. With this, he was also given a title as Distinguished Professor in 2014. Photonics is the science of generating and manipulating light, but the theory and knowledge behind is beyond electrical engineering. So now, I will pass the floor to Dr. Professor Dr. Harif to begin our today's session. You may present your slide now. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairperson. Uh, uh, your name is Shani, is it? Is your name Shani? What's your name? Yijo, Yijo. My name is Yijo. Yeah, yes. From, uh, from uh, Korea? No, I come from University of Malaya, Malaysia. All right, okay. Thank you for the kind introduction. I, should, I, I am very delighted to be able to present this talk to the, uh, to the chapter, to the electrical engineering chapter. And I would like to thank so my good friend, my darling friend, my darling friend actually, Professor Sulaiman Wadi Arun, a very nice man. He is a true gentleman. He's a true gentleman, a man with the very the, the, what the highest pay, pay uh, highest paid staff in University of Malaya, Professor Sulaiman. <laughs> a lot of money, man. Man with a lot of money. Okay, let me uh, share my screen. I, I, I share my screen now. Can you can you see my screen, uh, uh, Jojo and uh, Prof. Raman? Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay, why why am I giving a talk with this title? Beyond electrical engineering, it's very important for the future engineer to understand that uh, sometimes we're not caught in this what I I would consider very conventional field, very very conventional field, okay? This, uh, as you know, electrical engineering is a very long field, hundreds of years. Uh, we are very caught, we are, we are caught in this in this field, you know, the, uh, the uh, traditional field. So my talk this afternoon is to share with you, uh, is to broaden your horizon, to, bright, uh, to broaden your mind, to see things, beyond electrical engineering. You must see things beyond that, okay? Sometimes we don't get track, huh? time track in what we have learned in the uh, university. And uh, it's very important for the future, for the next 30 years of your life, to explore new areas, to explore new areas. It should not be restricted to your existing uh, domain that you are betrayed, all right? You must try to find Hey, there are something new that I can be a great inventor. I think that's what the people need. That's what the mankind need. Like for instance, we have COVID-19. Even if we produce so many medical doctors, none of our medical doctors is able to uh, make vaccine. You know, if you you be surprised, can't even make vaccine until today. We have to import from China and other countries. It means that our level of education does not create a very innovative mind. What I'm trying to stress today, innovation, innovative mind. So we train, we train a lot of medical doctors. I did uh, medical doctors, uh, medical science is like a tradesman, you know, like tradesman, people, you go to the, uh, the five foot way, people repair the shoes. You know, these tradesmen, uh, they are very good at repairing shoes. They sew the shoes, make it very nice. This is called trades, you know, this trade. And these are a very ancient field, okay? Uh, like uh, building, uh, laying brick, they are trade. Uh, it's a skill set. 
So medical doctors have been trained to operate on people, skill set. But they are, but the mind, they are, they are very good. They are very good practitioner. They are very good, you know, practitioner. They can operate and do very well, save life. But they cannot innovate. They cannot come up with new uh, 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 skill set. So they will only practice what they learn in school. What they learn in the university, they only practice that. But they cannot innovate like we have COVID-19 now. Why are we not able? We have so many doctors. You like you can check every family now. Every family will have one of the children doing medicine, uh, doing you know, medical science. We produce so many doctors, surplus. We, we are actually surplus of medical doctors. You may read in the newspaper last couple of months. We cannot absorb them in the Ministry of Health. We have surplus. So why is our health service is still poor? You ask yourself, I pose this question to Jojo. Eh? Your name is Jojo, is it? Man, what Jojo? Bijo, Bijo. Uh, Bijo. I pose you this question and also your friend who are attending this talk. Ask yourself, what is, what is going on in this country? We have so many doctors and so on. Some locally trained, some overseas trained, some Indian trained, some international trained, so many all over the world. If not law, we are going to become engineer. These are very uh, conventional, uh, conventional, traditional fields, actually. So what I'm going to talk today is to broaden your horizon, to change your mindset. Because next time you become uh, mother, you become father, you have your own children. Are you going to get constrained, get trapped in the conventional field, or you want to explore? You want your children to explore new things, and they become like Mark Mark uh, Sugarberg. Facebook, I think you know, Google, uh, you, Steve Jobs, Apple, everybody, everybody like iPhone. Professor Slaman has an iPhone. So everybody like all this great innovation. So we only buy things, but we cannot innovate. Why we cannot, why we cannot innovate? Because if you look at the culture of the Western culture and the Eastern culture are very, very greatly different. So Western culture, they, they explore on the children's interest. They explore on their children's interest, actually. So they are not so restricted in conventional uh, area of uh, discipline. They don't care if their children become dancer, but they become a world-class world dancer, actually. And they are very rich. They don't mind their children become actor, actress, singer. They allow their freedom. They allow the, the children freedom to explore their interest. The most important thing I want to stress is interest. If you do something that you're not interested, you cannot go very far, actually. You must do something that you are very, very interested so that you become very passionate. You become very passionate. So when you become very passionate, you can drive the area very far because it comes in your heart. If you do something that doesn't come from your heart, you will just do, maybe you can become a good student, get a first class, maybe that's all. But you cannot you find that there are so many first class that we produce, but we never produce a great uh, event, great event. So something is wrong in our education system. Like I explained to you, medical, medical doctors and, uh, and so on. Uh, we cannot make our own vaccine. We depend on China. We depend on so many countries to cure our COVID. Even we, are, we got vaccinated, when we get a new virus like Delta, mu virus, we don't know how to act. We don't know how to act, actually. We don't know how to respond. So many doctors, we have any um, press statement every day by no Isham. But what is the remedy? Are we living in fear? Are we living so worried about the, the virus? Uh, do we have to be you know, vaccinated? These are the questions that I want to raise to the student of today. So what is holding us back? We are not creative people. We are not creative people, actually. We are just followers. I'm very sad to say this. We are all followers. We follow somebody that has done something. We just do it. We are not leaders. Uh, we are not leaders. We are not creative people. So my talk today is beyond electrical engineering. Let's see what I have in my slide. Professor Doctor. Yeah. Before you proceed to your next slide, um, I would like to ask 
is it better for you to share your screen in full screen? I can share if you want. I have no problem. Yeah. So it, it provides uh, a better view I, I, for all I your participants. Okay, can you see the full screen? Yeah, sure. So we can see now. Thank you. Okay, what I'm going to talk today, I think I would, there are many new areas. There's beyond electrical engineering, beyond. All right. <clears throat> I just take three areas to stimulate your mind, to stimulate your mind, actually. There are many new areas that is very important for a young mind like you, like you all uh, to be stimulated. Okay. So I just picked three areas. I think uh, that is very common today autonomous vehicle and silicon photonics, and then we're going to discuss quantum computing. Now, let me share to you what I have. Now, I want to share with you, in the next 10, 20 years, people are talking about hybrid vehicles, you know, hybrid vehicles. If you are an electrical engineer, you should make the best motor, the most efficient motor drive system, a uh, motor drive train. You're an electrical engineer, power electronic, let's come under power electronics. You should be able to make a very good motor, very efficient, maybe 90% of efficiency, okay, and lasting. So in the next 10 years, people are moving to electric vehicles now. People are stopped using diesel and fuel vehicles. Because if you look at the current car, petrol or diesel engine has 20,000 individual parts. 20,000, so many parts in the car. Compared to electric vehicle, they have 20 parts on it. Imagine 20 parts. So in the future, your vehicle will have a lifetime guarantee, a lifetime guarantee. So if your only breakdown that you will get is the motor, and then you send back to you send back to the to the factory, they will replace the motor. You don't have to wait, they just replace, they don't have to repair now, they just replace. So now your life will change, okay, to electric vehicle. So how do electrical engineering fit themselves in the changes in the world? That is very important, uh, Jojo, and all the students here. How your electrical department going to fit to the changes that we are going to experience in the next 10, 20 years? Are we adapting ourselves? Are we adaptable? Are we still teaching the same old thing, old thing? Same old thing. So these are the changes that we should incorporate in our curriculum because now you find electric vehicle is the norm, all right? You have Tesla, you have Tesla, Mercedes, Toyota and so on. Now you find that in the next 10 years, there'll be no more petrol station. Because people are moving to electric vehicle, why do they need petrol station for? There's no need for petrol station. You have electrical pump. You go to some site, you can, you can charge from your home. If the electrical engineer like you after, I don't know what year you are in, maybe next couple of years become full-fledged engineer, you should make battery that lasts for maybe 10 years, 15 years. And then the battery can take you more than what we have now, maybe now about 150 kilometers, maybe 300 kilometers or 400 kilometers. So people can virtually charge the car overnight at home. So you don't need petrol station anymore. You don't need Bangladesh people anymore. You don't need pump, pump people because we have so many foreign workers. We have about 7 or 10 million of foreign workers. They are the ones who bring us a lot of problems with COVID-19. Right? Because when I was young, we do not have all this foreign worker. We do not have major disease. We have eradicate uh, TB, everything. Now TB is making a comeback and so on. So these are foreign workers. So we are paying very heavy price when we become over dependent on foreign worker so we should avoid being over dependent all right so there'll be no more petrol station the mode of business are different people don't need any more petrol they the uh, the arab have to drink their own petrol now because people don't need any more petroleum so people company like the petronas will be closing down in time to come there's no need because electric vehicle why do you need petrol in the first place I think the business consumption of oil is in the vehicle. Okay, of course we have oil for household and so on, but eventually it will be superseded by solar cell. It will be superseded by the solar cell, wind turbine energy. This will provide electricity for heating of home and cooling of home. 
So you have turbine, you have the wind turbine, you have solar cell that will replace existing uh, electricity that based on coal, that causing uh, the pollution, eventually causing us climate change. We have uncontrolled rain, we have landslide, people are dying, dry, no crops, no food and so on. So landscape are changing. So I'm here today to educate the engineers now, to understand how to fit yourself in the next 10 to 20 years, how to fit yourself, okay? So petrol will be down, motor industry will be simplified, it will be more automated using now industry 4.0, robotics, lasers, everything will be changed. So your field now has, been, has to be transformed into areas that will fit you into the new employment industry. Robotics, Industry 4.0, uh, uh, this automation, okay? Now, if you look, I can show you one important uh, event in the last 20 years. You, have you, you are young, you are still, I think, 18, 19. Have you heard about Codex? Codex, Codex, have you heard? No, for me, I never heard it before. Ah, because you don't come that age. Codex, if you remember from your parents, you ask your parents when you go back or you give them a call later. In those days, we take photograph using camera system. Using a camera, camera system is not based on the, on the, uh, on what we have now, on the display and so on. It's on film. You take, you use negative film. You use a negative film. And then you wrap around in the camera, you take snapshot, you have images forming on the negative, and then you go to the dark room. You, know, you can do, uh, just click and uh, Google search photography in the early 20s, all right? You have a dark room and then they will, they will clean up the film, they get a negative and then they will print into a hard copy, a hard copy. You may have that in your home. Uh, you do, I am very sure your father will keep you on a photograph when you are a baby. You go and see those, those, those you know, photographs. Those photographs was possible by Codex. They are the, the people who supply film, supply all this technology to make, uh, to uh, do photography. But Codex at one time employed 170,000 people, 170,000 people in United States. They are very big company, very big company. They are major, ma uh, ma uh, major, uh, what I say, uh, income generator for United States. And they saw 85% of all their photo paper worldwide. Everybody, I when I was young, I used Codex. So everybody in the world buy Codex to, for their photography. They control the world. But the whole problem they don't want to. They don't want to adapt to changes. So my keyword now: changes, changes. You know, that's why I give a talk beyond electrical engineering. These are called changes. They don't want to. They want to adopt changes. They still think that they are uh, the world still need photo paper, but people are using uh, this. You know, the light emitting diode. They are using this. Uh, you know, LCD display. They are giving. They are, they, are, they are using photo uh, transistor. They are doing many things to capture images. So they don't want to adapt because they are stubborn and then they are run by conventional people. The word, the people, the bosses in you know, Codex are old people. They run by conventional people who don't see changes taking place. So they want to stick to paper-based, paper-based, but people are changing. Eventually you find that Sony come up with all these things and Codex close. Completely, a major industry close. 170,000 people are without job. And you have Codex, you have Sony. I mean, you have Sony, you have so, uh, so many people making uh, LCD uh, uh, cameras, okay? They are making all these uh, cameras. Eventually, from the camera system you have on your handphone. Your handphone can have 20 uh, megapixel. You look at your iPhone, you look at your Samsung phone, you look at your Huawei, Huawei very high resolution, extremely high resolution. So you are taking photograph of event, not only photograph, but video. In those days, you must have camera for still picture and you have 
video camera for moving picture. There are two, still picture and moving picture. So now with your handphone, you can do both at the same time. You can take pictures, you can take video. You see how fantastic life has changed. These are called changes with time, uh, Dojo. These are called changes with time. And for us, for the young people like you, you have to adapt. You have to adapt. That is very important. You have to be flexible and uh, go with the changes. You cannot go against, you become like a dinosaur, like Codex. Codex close down. You know, Polaroid close down. And uh, so on. there are many things. Now, what is coming out now, like artificial intelligence? How a uh, machine thinks for you, all right? So, and next time when you go to the hospital, you find that doctor will not do any more open surgery for you. Will not do. Now, the, uh, the problem with medical surgery, the doctor depends so much on their skill, on their skill, on their hand skill. They have a steady hand and very important skill. skill. Now, sometimes they make a mistake in their in their surgery, they make a mistake at life. Life is the expense. People die actually. People die on the operating theater actually. That could be a mistake. All right, that is a possibility now. I don't want to blame that, but do that could be an opportunity. But in next ten years, you'll be robotic. Robot will do the operation. They are more precise. And if you incorporate artificial intelligence into this machine. They can operate precisely all your vein, all your nerve cell, the vein. They will know precisely because you can upload the whole, the whole knowledge of medical sciences about the body system onto a machine. You can download everything, and the mind is a bit small. They cannot download everything. So, by the but a machine, you can download everything, and they will do precision, precision surgery. Actually. So, in future, then years to come you see the doctor you don't see anymore the doctor doctor is there to guide the machine they are there to guide the machine but the machine will do everything for you even you go to the hospital the uh, doctor the doctor does not really diagnose you directly they do not diagnose you uh, directly you go to the medical hospital you go to the hospital they will take your blood sample and they will scan everything of your component your body system for the blood sample even your your uh, your cancer cell can be uh, detected from the blood cell. There are markers. There are cancer markers. Actually. So uh, from the the development of this uh, blood uh, blood sample, the science from other fields, and then you have people from the physical sciences uh, developing X-ray machine, uh, uh, the CRT computer tomography. MRI, these are the machines that do that help the doctor to diagnose the patient, to diagnose the patient. Okay. So the doctors don't do very much this day. Just they, are, they play an advisory role actually. And they run all these machines to diagnose a patient. So like patient Jojo come to see me, I will just send you, I will ask, take blood sample number one. I will send X-ray, your, your coffee, I will send X-ray. Machine will do everything and then they will come all the report that they will make, and then they will make, they will not make an individual decision because the field is so specialized. They will have a team of four or five people who will sit down and discuss. You can see this uh, movie in uh, TV series. They will, they will discuss, and then from there, they will uh, diagnose you whether you have cancer, whether you have water or sickness. So things are, uh, are, are changing rapidly in medical sciences, and uh, similarly also in electrical engineering. Okay. And you may have come and read the book Future Shock and Software. Um, a lot of things has uh, has changed now. Okay, you find that we have a smart city, a smart city with fewer car. So these are things that we have to uh, accept that going to take place in ten years, twenty years to come. Actually, all right. So the three topic that I'm going to go through with you guys quickly. Autonomous vehicle because next time you don't have to drive car anymore. Because when you drive car, you have accident. And then when you drink and drive, you kill people. So now with autonomous vehicle, you can get drunk and go home without knocking anybody down. Okay? So uh, machine will run your transportation. And then I will introduce I will introduce you silicon photonics for 
future communication, very broad bandwidth communication, extremely broad bandwidth of communication are based on silicon photonic. If you look at Intel, Intel uh, if you look at the Apple new iMac and uh, their, uh, their Mac Air and so on, they use M M1 chip. M1 chip means they are based on silicon photonic. They're based on optical system, partially on optical system. Eventually, it will be completely optical system because keeping a storage, storage can be done effectively using optical system compared to electrical system. Electrical system, you got to convert that into bits one and zero and store them in the RAM and they can take use space. But in the future, you can store images, movie in the holographic form, in the holographic form. So you do not uh, store them uh, in the RAM. So you reduce drastically the requirement for storage space. And then you also find that in the future, you can work on many dimensional. So these are the foundation of silicon, you know, photonic. They'll be the thing that will come in the next few years. Next, people are working very hard. Intel, most semiconductor companies are working on silicon photonic. All of them are working on silicon photonic based on integration of optical system to electrical, uh, existing, uh, existing electrical system. Then you're talking about quantum com, uh, uh, quantum computing. You may heard about Watson, Mr. Watson. Mr. Watson in IBM is a computer, a huge machine at IBM who can do medical uh, diagnosis of any sickness. And they are the smartest machine uh, on earth now. Now it's being, uh, it's being superseded by uh, Google. So uh, Google have the first quantum computing. Uh, quantum computer in uh, San Francisco. So thing has changed now, thing has changed so drastically now. Now, autonomous vehicle. Hold on, let me have to use my other slide here. <coughs> and uh, an autonomous vehicle or a driverless vehicle is, is one that is able to operate itself and perform necessary function without any human intervention. So you just see that you see in the graph, graph you have a driver, but in future you have a vehicle without a driver, it's just machine, purely machine, all right? And then, uh, and then uh, it, has the, it has the ability to sense it, the surrounding. Now, how do they, they do this? They do this by using laser actually. So it's called, Satellite mapping, you may have come across Google satellite uh, you know, mapping. They use laser light to detect the surrounding and guide the car to avoid car to car pollution or to avoid trees. So these are done optically actually. It's all done optically, all right? Advantages of autonomous vehicle may be able to provide certain advantage compared to human driven uh, vehicle. You will reduce accident. You will reduce accident because they can, program to stay one vehicle away from the next vehicle. So there will be no collusion, there will be no collusion. So there will be accident free. People will not have to die anymore. People will not have to die. Anymore. If your, if your uh, vehicle is not in a, working, in a working condition, it will start. So you will not drive erratically and drive a non-roadworthy vehicle on the road and kill people. So now, we reduce the death rate of people die, dying due, due to accident. <clears throat> a decrease in the number of the accident could also reduce traffic congestion. Now you find that it's uh, congested and they're using autonomous vehicle. We can reduce that, right? And which is further potential advantage posed by autonomous uh, vehicle. People who are not able to drive, maybe Jojo can drive. I will make assumption you are maybe aggressive uh, lady. You can drive a car, but some some lady they are scared to drive a car. They are scared to drive a car for no reason. I have few of my sister, uh, <coughs> and my I have a, uh, a daughter. She has a car. She bought a bus. She has a car, nice car, and she has a driving license. But she never dared to drive the car. Very strange. You know, some people just don't like to drive a car. They just scared to drive a car. All right? They have the fear, but we cannot force them. So by autonomous vehicle, there is no compulsion. There's no compulsion for you to drive the car anymore. You just sit and you just program the car where you want to go. Shopping, Jaya's Market, see movie, go 
go and, go and see your mother-in-law, your mother, just program. The car will take you, just rest and you can sleep in the car. You can literally sleep in the car and then it will just arrive at your destination. People who are not able to drive due to factors like age, people like me, oh, maybe one day I cannot drive a car anymore. And maybe I might broke my leg or lose my leg. I, I become disabled. I cannot drive. But I need to move around. So autonomous vehicle will help me to move. It will help people, uh, those uh, disadvantaged people, could be able to use auto automated cars as more convenient transport system. And then you also eliminate of uh, the elimination of driving fatigue and able to sleep during overnight journey. Maybe that you want to go back to Penang, for instance. You can just use autonomous vehicle. You can sleep overnight. You don't have to worry because the car will not get into accident. Only a few cases by Tesla. There are a few cases by uh, Tesla. You might understand Tesla autonomous uh, vehicle is at the experimenting stage. Experimentation. And Google has partnered with, I think Google has partnered with a Mercedes Benz for autonomous vehicle uh, under the company Alphabet. Alphabet do that. And most of the big software company, even Microsoft, partnering with uh, the, the automotive uh, company to make autonomous vehicles. Most software-based company, Apple, Google, Microsoft, are working with Mercedes, Audi, to make autonomous vehicles. Because autonomous vehicle, it will come, definitely, in the next few years. Electric vehicle is coming in, in a very rapid phase. After electric vehicle will be autonomous vehicle that will take, will change our life. All right. Now, if you look at my next uh, next uh, figure, that's how the autonomous uh, vehicle looks like. Because you might not see all because I have some picture of you and Prof. Sulaiman here. And that is a person by Shani somehow. <coughs> so you can see the different type of arrangement of vehicle. It goes with time. So, uh, you know, eventually, if you look at the last picture here on your, sorry, how do I go back? Uh, okay, uh, in, I missed a picture. I, I'm not so good at computer. So Professor, uh, I think you can try to press on the left button, the arrow key left button. Left button. It's not working on your Zoom somehow. It's not working on Zoom. Okay, never mind. It's okay. I think we've seen the picture just now. So if you look at autonomous uh, vehicle, you uh, if you look at one of the pictures that I put in my presentation, you don't have a driver. You don't need a driver. But you have a steering wheel in case you need to override. Just like you take flight. You take flight. Uh, normally after takeoff, sometimes there are also aircraft that can do autopilot takeoff and autopilot heading. You can do that actually. Most of the modern Boeing can, can do that, but sometimes it's, somehow it's not being encouraged. The uh, pilot will have human intervention. But once the, uh, the aircraft is airborne, they are being overtaken by the autopilot. Similarly, with the autonomous vehicle, you have a steering wheel in case you want to override the system. Okay, you to override the system. It allows you to override. So you have a vehicle that you don't have to wait to, to drive anymore. Now, these are autonomous vehicle. The next important thing that I want to share with the young people today, silicon photonics. Sliman is very good. Prof. Sliman is very good at silicon photonics. Okay. Silicon photonics is a material platform for which photonic integrated circuit. For which the photonic integrated circuit can be made. It uses silicon. It still uses silicon as the main fabrication element. All your electronics, all your electrical system are based on your chips, eh? your circuit are based on silicon, right, until today. So what actually happened in uh, silicon photonic, we still use silicon. We have not changed the base material. We have not changed the base material. As I said, we integrate optical system. We integrate optical system into silicon. And these are called photonic integrated circuit. The key takeaway, quantum computing is a study of how to use phenomena in quantum physics. You, know, you got to understand quantum physics, okay? Because in the future, we are using quantum computer. How the computer operates is very different what we are doing today. What we're doing today could be different in the next few years when we use quantum uh, computer. 
quantum physics to create a new ways of computing. <coughs> quantum computing is made up of qubits. We're talking about the angular, uh, instead of one and zero, we are talking about the spin and we're talking about the angular momentum of the electron. We're not talking about one and zero anymore. We're talking about the spin, up spin, down spin, and so on. These are called cubics. Unlike a normal computer bit, which can be zero or one, as I mentioned just now, a cubic can be either of those or a superposition of both zero and one. It can be either of those or superposition of one of zero and one. The power of quantum computer grows exponentially with more qubits. It grows exponentially. Now, if you look into modern uh, uh, modern uh, banking system, modern banking system needs to be uh, protected. I, I, I today, I do not have online banking because I don't trust. I'm very old, I don't trust online banking because people will take your money when you, when you fall asleep. Prof. Sulaiman got online banking, but you can hack into the system. You can take his money, maybe. So uh, online computing, uh, online banking is high risk because uh, no matter how secure, it's not secure. So by using quantum communication, another interesting field, which the Chinese is leading now, started in US, but China is taking very intensive development, is quantum communication. Quantum communication for banking, for banking actually. What they do, they, uh, they uh, generate photon pairs. They generate photon, but they come into pairs. One for transaction, one for reference. So before any transaction can take place, the reference must be present. So it can only be done by the sender. Only can be done by the sender. So there'll be no way you can hack into the system. These are quantum communication. The Chinese are leading, in fact, uh, they are implementing it in the banking system, secure communication, all right? Because it's money, it's a lot of money there. You need a secure communication. So these are beyond electrical engineering. What I'm discussing now, beyond what you are doing now, okay? Autonomous vehicle, part of your electric motor. If you look, uh, silicon in the photonic, you have doing amplifier, electronic. It's the same, but it has transformed to optical now. All right, so uh, you find that the power of quantum computer grows exponentially. You don't have to worry about how many, how many, uh, what is the speed, 2.5 gig. It will go so much higher, maybe 100 times. Uh, you don't have to worry anymore. Just like now we're going towards 5G communication. 5G communication is nothing more than optical fiber. Let me share with you. 5G communication is nothing more than having your antenna closely space and having more optical fiber in the ground. That's all. That's 5G communication is to increase your bandwidth. All right. Everything about bandwidth. So, uh, this is unlike classical computer where we're adding more transistor only and power linearly. So in the future, you don't have to add more transistor, but it has a very exponential growth. All right. <coughs> The picture is a bit small. My sincere apology. I get one of my staff to do this slide, silicon photonic, but I tell her what I want to talk to the student, especially electrical engineer. They are very smart students. I just want to open your mind. I just want to share this evening, this afternoon, to open your mind. To open your mind. To look things in different perspective. All right? So if you look into silicon, you know, uh, silicon you know, photonic, it has many sub discipline <clears throat> like quantum well structure, uh, germanium detection system, silicon modulators for modulating signal for communication, strange silicon for optical modulation. We have on-chip spectroscopy sensing platform, germanium-based mid-infrared photonics, sub-wavelength with wave guiding structure for near and mid-infrared. We have non-linear photonics super continuum comb generation for blocks. You have carbon nanotube or on on uh, you know silicon, and you have slow light and and uh, slow light and funnel uh, the cavity. The path on the right hand side tell you the path of siliconizing photonics. It started with laser actually hybrid you know, silicon, 
uh, laser in September 06. Eventually, it goes to data encoder, silicon modulator. You move to, you started with one gig, 10 gig to 40 gigabits per second. Eventually, now the current, uh, current communication system can go to 100, 100 gig, 100, 100 gig bits per second. And also, you need a very fast light detector. You have fast modulation. It means your pulses are very short. It runs into picosecond, eventually moving towards femtosecond. And then you must be able to have a photo detector that can detect signal in the femtosecond range. And then you have multiplexer and demultiplexer and basic lighting routing, like wave guide coupler. These are the development taking place in silicon photonic. Now the next the next thing before we end this uh, this uh, session is quantum computing. Quantum uh, con uh, quantum computing is coming. It be it be around soon. It will stay for the next hundred years. Quantum computing, because if we look at the history of semiconductor, it started after Second World War. Semiconductor uh, semiconductor technology started after Second World War. 19 after 1944, the end of Second World War, that's where it starts. But uh, the early 1950s, after Second World War, you have the birth of semiconductor industry, the birth of semiconductor industry. If you look at the, at the span of time, so the, 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 the future will be quantum, it will last for 100 years. It will last effective for 100 years. So be prepared for the changes. Quantum computing is an area of computing focused on developing computer technology based on the principle of quantum theory, which explains the behavior of energy and material on the atomic and subatomic level. Computer use uh, today can only encode can only encode information in bits that take the value of one or zero, restricting their their ability. And the advantages of silicon photonic is compatible with CMOS technology, electronic fabrication, which allows silicon photonics photo integrated circuit to be manufactured using established foundry infrastructure. And one of the meetings in the Senate, I think about last two months, I raised this issue to the Vice Chancellor. University of Malaysia is a very old university, it's uh, like an old man, uh, changes can be difficult. Very difficult to do uh, changes when you're old man. <coughs> you feel <coughs> you feel so comfortable in your existing environment. You feel so comfortable that you don't want to make a change or you don't want to change. If you look carefully, uh, 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 student uh, that attend for this talk, if you look uh, carefully uh, in the United States, I don't, I don't want to say about Britain. Britain is also a very competitive country. But United States, if you do your degree in United States, you can do double degree. It's very common students who go to US, they do double degree. Double degree, you can do law and business. After three years, you've got two degrees. Lawyer, you can you've got law degree or you can do a business and a degree. If you do electrical engineering, you can do physics because they are quite similar. They are quite a good overlapping between electrical engineering and physics. Okay, so people do double degree. I have friends, my old school friend who went to US. They all come back with double degree. In Malaysia, we do only single degree. Now imagine if you, if the university player and change and give our students more choices. The main thing is choices. Give to them more choices. They are mature enough to choose what they want to do, what they want to be. So let them do double degree. They can do, they can take, because if you look at the courses in electrical and physics, some parts are quite common. They can do additional courses in their summer vacation. Maybe in the semester break, they can do their extra courses. At the end, they can get Bachelor of Physics degree that teach you quantum physics, that teach you quantum physics that can enrich your knowledge for the future when you come to quantum computing, all right? And then you also have electrical engineering. So you come out after three years or maybe slightly more by half year, you got Bachelor of Electrical Engineering. And then it's not double, please don't mistook me, it's not double major, it's double degree. You must understand double degree. It's not double major, there are two different things. Double major, you do 
half physics, half electrical, or you do half math, half physics, half half only. But double degree is a complete degree. At the end, you have bachelor of electrical engineering, a full degree. And then on the other on the other hand, you have bachelor of physics or other field, a full degree. You have double degree actually. So this has been done in the US for the last 50, 60 years. And we are very slow to make the change. I proposed it in the last meeting. I don't know what happened to it. I think, uh, I hope they give to me, I strongly feel that the students should have choices. Mean that uh, the, 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 the student can take some theoretical subject, they can take some practical subject. So they should have choices because they should be able to cut themselves how to fit in the employment industry. They should be able to cut themselves how to fit into the future employment. That's very important. What you're going to become in the next 30 years, you should be able to know yourself. What are you, what you need to become? CEO, CEO, inventor, creator, you must know what you, what you want to do in the next 30 years. So this is very important. So I hope they take my advice. So hopefully, I think it's very important for us to be more, more open and should not have boundaries, okay? These are quantum computing. And if you look, the first quantum computing is in Google. I will share with you, Google. If you look at United States of America, all the top company, all the top company in the Wall Street, all the top company in the Wall Street run by the Indian from India. <laughs> All of them, you go and check and see Google, Apple, everybody, both of them are Indian from India. Why? Let me tell you the history, baby. It started last 30 years. An uh, Indian city, what's the name of that uh, city in India where all the you know, programmer was there? Uh, Hyderabad, I think so. So I'll check that. Uh, what is the city? Uh, in that period of time, somehow India get the problem right. They train many you know, programmer, and then I think Hyderabad, they, they have a big and all this company. Bangalore, Bangalore. Uh, Bangalore, Bangalore, sorry, it's not right. Ba uh, Bangalore. In the last 40 years, Bangalore, India got it right. They have a Bangalore city of programmer. They got city of the programmer. So you find people from everywhere in the world go to India to get people to do the job for them on the programming. So eventually all these people like CEO Sunda Pichai, he from uh, Bangalore, he moved to uh, Google, become CEO. He changed the white people. Now you have the black people, not Indian, not the black, uh, the black of the black, but these are Indian people. And India are running all the major, uh, major industry. Major industry in America are run by the Indian from India, not from uh, Malaysia, <laughs> from India. But another important thing that you must see the, uh, the change, if you look at United Kingdom, United Kingdom, all the minister are Indian, mostly are all Indian, all the minister of the British government are mostly Indian. So something is right about the Indian. Something might have gone right, that they are now the most sought after workforce, the most sought after workforce. Okay, so there are certain things about them that we should study. They maybe adaptability. They are able to talk. They are able to convince. Those are very important uh, skill set that they have that we might not have. So this is a Google quantum uh, computer in the Santa Barbara lab. We have a collaboration with Santa with University of California in Santa Barbara on light emitting diode by somebody in the physics department. They have quite a close collaboration with the normal, uh, normal array, Nakajima. So. so if you look into the, these are the future. They, this is this quantum computer operational, you know, I want to tell you, it's a working system. Eventually you have this at your desktop. Huh? And when I came back here last time on my study, uh, if you look at the early uh, computer, it's a mainframe, very big computer. They all will be, if we have one computer center here, we do all our computing from the computer center, send a punch card, they make holes, and then that's how we do our the programming, a big main, uh, mainframe system. So when I come back in 1983, we have, uh, we thank to Microsoft, he has what we call personal computer. 
He copied Apple. Apple started earlier, but he copied, uh, he copied Apple. He has a Microsoft personal computer on the desktop. So from the room that fill up the whole room eventually become a desktop computer, which we are enjoying today. Now, quantum computer, it will be at your desktop eventually. Will be there. Matter of time. It's a working system. It's not experimental. It's a working system. Okay. Now, <coughs> time is up. I will not go into this part. Maybe I just stop here. I think I don't want to take your time so much. Uh, I, I have some, some interesting slide on laser machining. I think I'll stop at that three topic that I want to convey to the young mind. I think it's the young mind to me are very important. They're extremely important to me because they are the future of Malaysia. They are the future. If we can uh, educate them well, and we can give them the passion, the, the interest in science, the interest to do things, I think in the next many years, Malaysia will uh, benefit from this young mind, actually. The young mind is our future, Prof. Lemon. So always pay attention to young mind. They are our future. Okay, thank you very much. I will end my talk. As such, Jojo, uh, thank you very much. Right, sure. Thank you, Professor Dr. Harif. So now we are going to come to our Q and A session. Um, before this, I would like to ask Professor Dr. Harif, uh, yeah. can you please uh unshare your screen first so that I can share my slides to the participants. You mean to unshare first, is it? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, okay, sure, sure. I stop my, I stop my. Okay. All right. So, dear particip participants, we have come to our Q and A session. So, feel free to comment your questions yeah. in your chat box. Free, free to comment. You can shoot. The question should be down. Yeah, but before this, I always enjoy people uh, people shooting me down. Yeah, definitely. I have some questions for you. Yeah, for definitely. Sir. Please, please. These okay. questions are uh, is being submitted uh, by the Google registration form previously, so I will read out the questions to you to answer. The first question is from uh Ari Fikri. He mentioned that uh, what will be the future look like for fiber optic and semiconductor industry in Malaysia? Okay, I will answer that question in a very nice manner, uh, Jojo. I still call you Jojo, it's a Jijo. You have to forgive my ignorance. I, sometimes I can be quite uh, you know, ignorant. Yeah, sure. In the future, you see, uh, you cannot run from fiber, from fiber optics. We are able to do what we are doing today, you know, with uh, so many people attending, 75 of them, because of fiber optics. You imagine if there's no fiber optic, the most you can do is just send text. That's all you can do, text. You cannot do picture, you cannot have screen now, share the slide. You cannot do anything of this. It's impossible, purely impossible. And we should thank Professor Sulaiman, fiber optics. Because of fiber optics, besides fiber optics, because of course you learn only fiber optics. But besides fiber optics, there are many other things, optical amplifier, optical light source. So all the fiber-based technology, when you integrate with the electrical system, uh, what we have now, this will open a new avenue, we are new avenue like 5G communication. Uh, eventually, we can do, uh, we need to see the medical doctor. We can do online. You know, these are a lot of things that can transform. So you don't have to move from your home, actually. So the future of fiber optic is to stay. They were, the only thing, they will increase their bandwidth and then the wavelength spectrum, the wavelength of communication will extend from the C band. The C band, we're talking about wavelength 1, 5. Uh, 40 until 1560 to the L band, maybe to the S band, eventually the 2 micron. There are so many techniques or technology that can be improved, can be implemented in optical fiber. Yeah, 
tremendous opportunity optical fiber tremendous tremendous and if you do work with prof sulaiman you find that you can have the opportunity to innovate to innovate in the future you find that you can develop new product that will eventually make you like mark zuckerberg billionaire he throw his money everywhere now very young chap very young chap facebook uh, uh, creator there are many other people like him uh, telegram and so on you find people like uh, whatsapp is so to have so many people so this are opportunity to become creator what i want to talk today i want to make you guys there to become creator to become innovator to make the change to create new industry for malaysia so that you can provide employment to, to your friends to your junior this is a noble task it's very important all right next question <coughs> all right for the next question uh they ask from chin sing chi he is asking from your point of view which sdg should be focused by big companies such as uh, google facebook and microsoft in the coming 10 years can you uh, repeat the somehow because the internet is quite bad i think the campus internet is bad okay uh, sorry i think i think i think the question is so okay in the chat is it uh let me see here so the question appear in the chat no So you can read uh, 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 slowly because the campus uh, internet always uh, the Maya system, so many problems we have somehow, it's never stable. Okay. Sure, I'll read one more time. From your point of view, which sustainable development goals should be focused by big companies such as Google, Facebook, and Microsoft in the coming 10 years? I, 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 I answer the question in this way. I have not got, I wouldn't know uh, 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 what is the change going to be in the next uh, 50 years, but 10 years you can see the change. The one that's coming out now with big companies like uh, Google and so on, they are focusing on autonomous vehicle. Okay, they are looking at driverless, uh, driverless uh, vehicle. And then they are talking now, most companies are talking about 6G. Okay, we are talking about 5G, they're talking about 6G. So there are many, there are many things that will make uh, people uh, they, they will they will come with new technology, what we define as disruptive technology. Disruptive. Disruptive te uh, technology means it changes your life, your how you look into life. Just that we are talking about photographic paper, you never come across. that we have in the camera system in the handphone is called destructive destructive it kills existing industry so for the future sustainable i think for 10 years we are looking at the three areas which i discussed just now silicon photonic uh, quantum communication and also driverless vehicle this is the one that going to change our lives in the next 10 years in the next 10 years but uh, more than that 50 100 i cannot I cannot predict to be honest, because sometimes these changes can 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 uh, can take its own direction. Actually, all right. All Next. right. All right. Thank you, Professor Doctor. I believe uh, Shinji should get the point from Professor mentioned just now. Uh, the last question in the form is: How would you describe what is quantum electronics? I believe this is a fresh idea to electrical engineering students. So okay, uh, it's a interest, interesting uh, quantum. We uh, quantum we normally relate to optical quantum optics uh, quantum. So quantum electrical, I will look at the electron having a quantum, having a quantum state. Okay, let's go back to the basic idea about physics. So normally in any atom, you have orbital, you have energy level and you have orbital and normally electron will transit from one state to the next state. 
So there will be a change of energy either through absorption or through emission. So if you have through emission, you have the foundation for laser. Through absorption, you have uh, spectroscopy. So quantum electrical, I mean, I would guess, I would guess, you're talking about the electrical charges having a quantum state. I mean that you, uh, if you have electrical charges, if I go in terms of uh, what are electrical charges, they are electron. So electron uh, have a charge. Yeah, when you have electron, it has a spin state because electron can spin. So it can spin anti-clockwise, can spin anti-clockwise. So you can have an up state or you can have a down state. That could be some way of looking. I'm not sure to be. I cannot. Uh, I cannot. Uh, I'm not sure. I want to be honest to you. I don't want to lie to you. That could be some idea of quantum elect, uh, quantum elect, uh, quantum electrical. If quantum electronic, I know quantum electronic is laser. Uh, depending on the question, quantum electronic is laser. Actually, when we call laser. We classify as quantum electronic because the process has been done by electron to give you light. Light are normally we use the word quantum of light. So the process that change are electron that give out light. We call it quantum electronic. Quantum electrical, uh, as I explained just now, I just guessing. I will just guess a while shot. I, I will not be able to answer very precisely to the question. Unless you want to, I can uh, Google now. Quantum, quantum electrical, I can go quickly, Google now. They are none. They are none like that. They are quantum mechanics, quantum physics, and as I mentioned, quantum electronic, which is laser, uh, semiconductor laser. Okay. I hope my answer would uh, satisfy uh, the person asking the question. Yeah. Um. If this question, if the answer by professor is unclear to you, uh, the participants. You still can unmute yourself and ask the professor directly so that uh professor can get your point uh in a more clear form. Uh so I will proceed to the questions that have been asked in the chat box. The first question is is from Ho Min. He asked that Professor Harif, are you working on photonic device based on graphene? Yes, yes, we used to work. Uh, we have moved to uh, other 2D material. We started with the you know, graphics. And now we move to other materials. So uh, we have many, we have moved to many new materials. But earlier we start with a uh, uh, graphene. Graphene is the, the first, uh, I won't use the word discovery, the first demonstration of two dimensional material. It's only a layer, only a layer. It has, it has only X and Y. It doesn't have the Z axis. So only a flat material, 2D material, no, no height. So there was a first demonstration by Novoselov and uh, Andre James from University of Manchester in 2010. And I want to share with a student of a student uh, today. They discovered that by accident actually. They were doing something else. They were doing something else. Sometimes let me share with a young mind. Sometimes we can plan, we can plan. Of course, we can plan and we can chart our future. But sometimes, sometimes you find that things happen by accident. So Novos Allah and Jam were doing something on semiconductor. They were in their mind to do on graphic. But during in a British system, they have a lot of tea break during tea time. They just take the graphic, uh, the graphite block. They take a certain tape, just a cheeky, uh, itchy finger, stripping the stripping the graphite block, and then do multiple stripping. Eventually, they, after that, they find they can form a single layer. It's just by accident, actually, not by not by plan. Okay, it's very important to understand. Sometimes great discovery are done by accident. Same thing like X ray. You find there are many things of great discovery are accident by accidental. Actually. 
So I hope I answered that question. The next question. Uh, uh, the next question, it will be from Benedict Gore. Um, he asked that, um, Professor, you mentioned that we need to be creative and not limit ourselves to our own field, but how we can train ourselves to be creative. And he also asked that if we are interested in photo uh, can you like give an advice for them to how to do that for them to learn how to start on it? Is there any good materials or books <coughs> that are suitable for beginners to learn on okay. photonics? I will share with you. I will answer this question. Quite interesting question. Um, as I mentioned in my talk, creativity is very important. Okay, subject uh, subject matter you take electrical engineering is just like a food for the brain. It's a food for the brain actually. It helps you to train your mind to think, to think, to analyze. Okay. Once you have the ability to read, analyze, to be you know, critical, then you become very creative, you become inventive. You will look at things differently from your friend. You become very creative. So how do I be, how can I be uh, creative? I got to read a bit more than the rest. And then I have to look at the things at a different angle and be more intense. And I, I am very sure you will become very creative. What we need, what Malaysia need in the next coming years are creative people actually. All right? We, we don't want to train engineers just to be engineer. I think we don't want that. We want to train engineer to become like Dyson. You know Dyson? The, the, the vacuum cleaner <laughs> Dyson. We want like that. We want people of different caliber, different caliber. Inventor, great, uh, creator, we, we want that. So if, can, if we can do that, then Malaysia will be a successful country in next uh, next 10 years. Because they have to compete with Vietnam. They have to compete with Thailand. They have to compete from Indonesia. So we are waiting. We, are, uh, we have to compete with the best brain of this country. So how do I want to overcome this competition? I will make our own people. We are a small population, 30 million. I will make our, our people to be more creative, to be more creative. For instance, like Sweden. You heard about Sweden? Sweden is not a big country, you know. Sweden about 3 million people. Sweden is a 3 million uh, people. If you look at Sweden, uh, they produce Volvo. You heard about the uh, Volvo, Saab, Aeroplane. They produce Nokia. Uh, Nokia. In those days, everybody used Nokia. You might, I think Jijo uh, might not come across Nokia for quite some time. Now smartphone, Nokia was a fixed line phone, a simple phone, calling phone, hello, hello, hello. And they are king. Everybody were using Nokia at one time, just like Codex. Everybody was, was using Nokia. So Sweden is 3 billion people that uh, you look at Ikea, it's uh, from, I think, Finland, Ikea. Uh, look at this uh, 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 Swedish country, this uh, Finnish. They are small population, but they are very creative people. So what are we going to do now? We look at them. We are a small country, serviced by Indonesia, 300 million. Thailand, about 70 million. You have Vietnam, about 70 million. Uh, we cannot compete on the best page. So what we're going to do now, make our young people to be creative, inventive, so that if they come up with fantastic product, eventually you can market all to the ASEAN country. And all you all can become very rich. Uh, money is good, actually. Having a lot of money is always good. I'm telling you the truth. It's always good, okay? So come back to the question on photonic. Now, uh, I have answered the question, uh, the most important point for today is uh, to create the awareness and the interest to become creative. That's the, why I want to give this talk. The other important thing that I uh, question about the photonic, I'm telling you with the Google search internet, you find everything. One of the good websites to learn a lot of new things are Khan Academy. K H A N Khan Academy actually. You can Google search. They teach you everything. <laughs> Very clever way of doing things. You know? So you, with the internet, YouTube, you can learn a lot of things. And if you have any obstacle in uh, in understanding the knowledge, you have Professor Sulaiman there. You go and see him. Uh, Prof Sulaiman, come. Uh, I will, I have this problem. Come address my 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 problem. That is the reason why the lecturers are there, actually. 
to give you insight, to give you insight, to give you ideas, to help you to think actually, to help you to think and to provide you passage to become a rich people. Okay, that is the role of the lecturer. Okay, I hope I answered those two questions, creative and not botanic anymore. All right, uh, there is another three more questions. Yeah. Uh, from Uma, he asked, Professor, as we know, the environment is getting worse <coughs> because the technology has been developed. So what makes you believe in the future that the development won't cause the same effect? Maybe he means the development of the autonomous, example like the autonomous car, quantum computing, and many more, like you mentioned before this. Okay, I will share uh, to Uma. Uma, I will share with you, Uma. Now, if you look, uh, in those days, we use petrol engine, we have uh, air pollution, all right? We have air pollution. So you give up carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, all type of air pollution, carbon dioxide, the biggest culprit. We give you a greenhouse effect, and then you have a lot of this problem, killing of ozone layer, and then you have uh, the country getting hotter, and the country getting colder, hotter, rain, not very well controlled compared to the last 100 years. So you have what they call climate change, all right? So it started with <coughs> air pollution. Eventually, we moved to electric vehicles. So there is no more exhaust, no more uh, uh, air pollution. But you create another pollution, the lithium-ion battery pollution. You are shifting the, uh, the pollution from air to ground pollution, but you got to, after you use 10 years, uh, 10 years, this lithium ion battery, you have to discard that. You have to discard that. Eventually, you have a mountain of old batteries. Now, the most important technology are people working in sustainable science to recycle the lithium ion battery. If you can do recycling of lithium ion battery, then the changes like electric vehicle, autonomous vehicle, will not be a great effect to change our current environment. But you must understand, if you have done thermodynamic, I hope you have done thermodynamic. It's in one law that you learn in thermodynamic, that if I'm not mistaken, the third law of thermodynamic, the entropy is always positive. Entropy, that the S is greater than zero. So you cannot uh, undo the changes in the world actually you go into that, uh, you know, uh, that change will take place, but whether you will survive that change is another, another question. Actually. But this uh, basic uh, entropy law, uh, uh, the, the entropy is always uh, positive. So the, uh, things will change, that climate will happen. You can't really change, but you try to, what you can do is to reduce the, the, the progression just to reduce it from happening instead of faster it becomes slower that's all but you cannot arrest the problem uh, completely i hope i answered my question Uma. all right we will proceed to the next question uh this question is from Shinji. he's asking how do you think quantum computing will distort the field of machine learning Will it make the machine learning architecture to be obsolete? Can, can we make his question? Eh? Uh, yeah, his question Min actually Min is inside the chat box. Ming Kang, is it? No, Xin Chi. Let me see. Eh? You can scroll out a bit. Scroll down or scroll up? Scroll up. Okay, I have uh, Shani, Narina Mokta, Oming. Oming is look like a person who sell our equipment. Uh, uh, I have you know, Benedict. I have VT Singh. Ah, yeah, that's one. Okay, uh, how do you think quantum computing will distort the field of machine machine? Uh, um, Quantum computing is you have a faster way of doing things, but uh, you still need machine machine learning. You still need uh, the programming. 
the uh, quantum computing is more like uh, technology. It's the, the, uh, it's the technology actually. Okay, we use maybe quantum uh, the material to do all these things, but the uh, coding and so on, you see, it require machine, machine, machine uh, learning. So machine learning will stay there, will still will be there. It will not go off in the next uh, 30, 40 years. It, it's, it's still important, all right? It will not be obsolete, uh, VT, don't, don't have to worry. If you are interested in machine, uh, machine learning, it will be there for the next 30, 40 years. Okay, I think I've done everything. Uh, can I stop now, uh, uh, Jejo? Uh, sorry, oh, actually, there's one last question anymore. Do you so, want so, to ask? Yeah, sure. Where's the last question? Uh, the last question is from Ming Kang. Ming Kang, okay, hi, Prof. Yeah, this is the last question. Hi, Prof, with the current silicon shortage, Due to the surge in personal computing needs and the expensive use of rare earth materials like lithium, uh, phones, and laptop, what is your view of this? Okay, Mika, I, I think rare earth, uh, China control, they have a quite a large, uh, large reserve of rare earth. Uh, the other country that have rare earth is being speculated is Afghanistan. Malaysia has a rare earth, but you all you all uh, demonstrate, right? Huh? Do you all do you remember you all uh, uh, demonstrate again our rare earth uh, company in Kuantan? We have some rare earth deposit. That we have not explored completely, but there are also rumors in uh, Kedah we got a very big uh, deposit of rare earth. I think the rare earth people People last time who is, are not so much interested to explore, to mine rare earth because you know, they don't see the future. They'd be mining gold. People would like a gold, shiny metal, and a diamond stone that glitters. People are looking for diamond and gold. That was the main professional thinking in those 100 years back. Gold, diamond, copper, and so on. So people never took, never took in any serious thought about rare earth. But because of the semiconductor industry, there's a big requirement for rare earth. So now people are exploring and mining rare earth, you know, mistaken Afghanistan. That's where the American goes there for 20 years. There's a large deposit of rare earth in Afghanistan. Uh, but China has a very big deposit of rare earth. But uh, I think some part of this country has some rare earth. I would not say very big, but some. And uh, rare earth is very important. I want to answer to Minka. Uh, silicon shortage uh, should not be a problem, uh, Mika, because uh, silicon comes from silicon dioxide, actually. It, it's not so much of... Uh, uh, it comes from... Uh, you can harvest... You can, I think not mistaken, you can harvest you know, silicon. The only, uh, the only problem is a temporary problem of silicon shortage because of the COVID-19 already. Because of the, of the current... Most of the car industry couldn't get a chip in time because car industry use a lot of electronics now. So they couldn't get the chip in time because of the COVID-19 work uh, lockdown and so on. I, I don't think uh, silicon uh, has that problem of shortage actually. So the current shortage that has been highlighted this couple of months or this year is due to the industry not able to operate on full scale actually. All right, there should not be a problem to have a, a silicon. If there, if, uh, if there is really a problem, people have not explored extensively uh, germanium or other semiconductor material. People have not explored. People are very comfortable with you know, silicon. Why? Because of the foundry. Because the existing uh, industry all based on the silicon, they are very comfortable with the existing equipment on the silicon. But there are also other semicon you know, materials like uh, germanium and other materials, which can do similar things but may not have extensive facilities as uh, in the silicon industry. All right. Okay, thank you, Dijong. All right, thank you, Professor, and thank you, the participant, for your active uh, questionings, the professor. So um, thank you, doctor, today for sharing his thoughts and experience, as well as answering the questions. I believe your sharing is definitely an eye opener to the participants here. So uh, we'll come to our 
last session, which, will, which is our photo session. So I would like to ask all the art participants to turn on your camera, if you don't mind, just for a quick photo session with our professors. Please don't leave yet for this because we will distribute our attendance form for you to fill in. You will get an e-cert certificate from us later on. Come on, just turn on your camera. Just a quick photo session. Remember, please don't leave yet. I will unshare my screen first. Come on, come on. Is everybody ready? They are very shy. I think they are mostly shy people. Would they be faceless? Yeah, I saw many faces already. Oh, Homing is there. No wonder I see. Homing. Homing is there. Yeah, Prof Harris. Ah, I saw you got me, but I was a player. I, I go back to the school, I told you already. Yeah, that's very good, uh, Hopeng. You are a very, very interesting man. What are you doing? Giving talk. <laughs> <laughs> I got a student. Well, I didn't congratulate you. Uh, when did you get your datuk ship? Long time back, uh, about long seven back. years. Oh. I just want, I want to encourage the student to become as rich as you. Oh. Homi is a very rich man, you know. Well, I'm also a hard worker. Yeah. You want to donate us any uh, money, Homi? Uh, you am always ask for donation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now the business is very bad, huh? Because of COVID nineteen. Homi, yeah, very bad. You in your in your office, you're doing some uh, degree you have now, is it? I do a M field. I'm doing a, a high performance computing. We are using these uh, accelerators, uh, G, GPU and FPGA. Oh, very good. Uh, I tell you, I do appreciate people like you. Who's yours? Uh, I, uh, ask you for the graphene is because they are. Doctor, sorry for the interruption. Uh, yeah. But can we take the picture? <laughs> okay, okay, sure. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Okay, one more. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Okay. Okay, okay. thank you, doctor. That's all. Okay, so I, I, I can leave now. Okay, I will see you around. Uh, 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 Homie, I'll see you around. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, take care. Take care, bye. Thank you to all the participants. So you will see a link to fill, the, fill in the attendance. So please fill in, you will get your attendance and also the e-certificate. If you can't see the link, uh, please scan the QR code on the share screen now. There's a feedback form QR code. So you just scan and remember to follow us in our social media because this is just our kickstart on our event series. Stay tuned. So with this, we have come to our end. Thank you everyone for participating. Goodbye and have a good day.